Hey guys, Heavy Arms 45 here. Now, I hope y'all enjoyed the stuff I did for Black History Month. You know, it's now officially over, you know, and the month that we asked to do celebrate. You know, if you black, you black. You're not going to just suddenly change one day. So, that's besides the point. But, I decided to try and go back to the old hustle and bustle of what I make. So, I figured I'd start back at Pathfinder. So, I'm going to finish up part of the story of what I was telling y'all last time. Where I left it, I think the last time was... Birnock had been arrested. Birnock, after being arrested... Um, his punishment this time was not chosen by the... Uh, by Zahiri. This time, his his punishment was chosen by Alex. And now Alex was like, hey, screw it. I have him work for me. So he basically made it to where he couldn't drink anymore for a while. Um, you remember, after stealing money from a councilman and all this stuff, yeah, it kind of screwed everything up. Um, and the player who was playing beer knock kind of was okay with it because he just wanted to see how long this character was going to survive he was expecting him to die he actually expected him to die the first time but the way i play my games is i leave it kind of open-ended because no one's going to just kill you for being an idiot even though i do use the rule that my dm used to tell me that stupidity is punishable by death um, well, it's not a rule, it's actually a law that, like, literally, but the only person that he was really stupid to was the person that actually he would, had gotten into a fight with. So, for the most part, the stupid part, if he, if, uh, Zahiri wanted to kill him, he technically could have, and probably would have got off scot-free. Who knows? So... Um, he decides to make a new character. Um, coming into town, this large horned creature comes in. A minotaur. A big, stupid, idiotic, crazy, hungry as I don't know what minotaur. Um... And I'm just messing with him. His name was Huggins. Huggins was a giant mentor barbarian. He was not, he wasn't a bad character. Um, he, he just, any character that the player that played Beer Knock and Huggins did always made me laugh. And also was at the same time one of the biggest frustrations for me playing the game. Because as DM, I'm having to try and maneuver my way around him. Like, anyone else could do a fight and it, the fight would go pretty much the way I would expect. But he was always the outlier. He was always the X factor that I didn't know how to plan for. And that was the problem with him, just trying to plan for him. And you'll hear it in the story I'm going to tell y'all later on. But um, Huggins, for the most part, uh, started another generation of players. When he came in, like I had, it, uh, you had Duran, uh, Duran Wolf was still playing. Um, sometimes he would come in and out because you know he has business. He's trying to start up. Hadn't started up yet, but he was trying to start it. So he was always trying to look for new girls. Um, but we had new players come in. Some actual new to the game. Some that been away for a while. Um, like one of the new players we had was named her character name was Jay Quartz. And she was a sorceress, if I remember correctly, who had a focus in like I'm trying to remember what her bloodline was, because in Pathfinder, you know, each person had a particular bloodline that they uh Got their power form, form 
from and hers was a uh, stormborn uh her she was a child of elementals i believe like cl uh cloud el well not cloud air elementals i guess you could say are like cloud giants or something like that so for the most part her character dealt with nature a lot of times um yeah and so her character was trying to be more a better sorcerer so she was always trying to improve herself and it worked for the party because when it came to trying to introduce her to the group i just had to give her a job she was trying to find a job to try and make money plus to better her skills at being a sorceress like i said she has never played the game so it worked perfectly um and at the same time we also had a person who he had played dungeon dragon before and basically since pathfinder is like dungeon dragon 3.5 um for the most part he just need to like basically get back on the bike and start remember how to roll but he had played the game before or at least a version of it and his character name was braddock dragor and he was a human uh cleric now he his introduction to the group was a little bit different um and i realized i haven't told y'all how huggins met everybody and it's gonna tie in in a second so uh braddock was very into dragons he wanted to find dragon armor he wanted to speak to dragons he he wanted any type of spell that they could find that is spe specifically dealt with dragons and that was fine um except for as a DM, I'm like, I don't want him to get, like, spells like that. And the reason I say I don't want him to get spells like that, in my game, there is, and I haven't told anybody, there are ancient, what I consider ancient spells. And the reason they're considered ancient spells is because they're spells that are actually in the, um, in Dungeon Dragons 3.0. Because there was a lovely book called the Spell Compendium, which had every single spell ever thought up for Dungeon Dragons 3.5 in one book. So I was like, this is great. You know, like I could use this as ancient spells that like when people were just like trying everything. And so these spells are like unknown to them for the most part. So, yeah, I'm like, yeah. And so when he said dragons, I'm like. Let me look in the spell compendium and see if there's like spells for dragons. And there's a good amount of um, spells for dragons. And so that was his plan. So I had him meet Alex, um, my little elf that is kind of crazy. He's supposed to be the magical nut of the world. So like the mad scientist type nut not like he's crazy and out of his mind but literally if you've heard any of my other stories about him that's how he is he's supposed to be a nut he is very magical very uh outrageous in the way he does and so he meets up with him tells him about where he like working for the council so that he could try to get approval to get go into the library that they have and so what happens is that that's how he meets the group he goes in trying to get approval to get into the main magic library which is ran by alex because alex is the magic library because he owns just about every book there is um yeah i that's what I did. Um, so they're all together. So you have Braddock, Yurichi, Zahiri, 
Jade, Huggins, and Doran. And if you remember last time, we were talking about people were starting to fall like flies. Um, the Helsing organization had figured out that the reason that people were dropping like flies was because there were vampires. And not stupid ones. Uh, there were actual good vampires out there that were taking people down and were kind of feeding themselves and kind of um, getting themselves caught. And there was a arrest that had happened. And this is where Huggins comes into play. Huggins comes into town in all his mentor goodness and proceeds to try and eat people. Like, he just tries to eat whatever. He, like, randomly starts attacking people, trying to eat them, and he's captured, arrested, locked up. And during that time, there was a councilman, uh, and I call him Councilman A, who tried to basically judge him, well, judge Huggins and Zahiri for different crimes um, and suggestion of what they should do with him. And in the end, it all kind of went downhill for Councilman A. Councilman A died. Um, heroically though, he died trying to save a group of women during a, um, during a night when he was out, uh, patrolling because he was actually supposed to be a good guy. I just like, as I was building the character, he was just kind of a racist for the most part. He was a person who thought that, uh, other races were evil for the most part like he was okay with elves he was okay with humans but he had a deep seat of hatred against dwarves and that was where some of the problems have because his hatred for dwarves i say it came from finding out that his wife slept with a dwarf and so he was just going through some things at that time and so when he died the party cheered it was so sad. They were like, because like for a whole ep for a whole episode, I was about to say, we just had this whole thing of a trial going on. And he's talking down about dwarves. And I think that one dealt with that dealt somewhat with beer knock also at that point. Which whoo. So he dies. Um the Helsing organization suggests that people go out and he basically paid f well the healthy organization paid for the um the group to go out and try and find the um uh, vampires and the healthy organization were going out too but they were going in a different direction and so my plan was was that i was the plan was to have them go against vampire vampire spawn that I created uh, because I'm the DM and I want to kind of uh, give them a difficult fight. And I was like, these standard vampires won't be enough. I need something stronger because the standard vampire was pretty weak compared to them. So what I did was I built a couple of vampires and I sent them in the direction of where I knew the vampires would be at. I didn't just put them on a random thing. I like actually gave them a hint of where to go to. So I have them go to a tomb. It's an old dwarven tomb, ancient. Um, probably used to be holy, but the relics and all the hollowedness of it has faded away. The place looks, um, the outside has tall, hard, uh, stone doors. And 
as they come up there, knowing that there might be vampires inside of it. They bust the doggone door down. They literally break a, a stone door to get in there. And I just sit there and I'm like, oh my goodness. Let me put the put the idea of how this place is set up. It's a tomb. It's like a family type tomb. There were six different side slots to this tomb. To a few um uh, a few graves and stuff like that. And so the caskets are in there, and it's like I said, it's supposed to be a tomb to keep this whole family there. Well, the vampires that I had planned and the spawn that I had planned have basically uh kicked all those bodies out and have made themselves a nice little home there. So there are three uh kind of like slots where you could have like three graves in. I mean three uh coffins in, tombs in. So in each one of them there were uh Dilla's choice of a vampire spawn and a vampire and another vampire or um nothing but vampire spawn or one vampire and so what was supposed to happen was they sneak in they come in and they attack one they might make some noise which gives the others a listen check to wake up from their coffins and attack now yeah it's the daytime don't I, I, i'm not worried about that you know everybody knows that you should attack a vampire during daytime because if you're in the sun, they're not going to be a mess with you. Well, they they did go in the daytime. I'll give you that. But they broke the door down. And I did my due diligence as a DM. I did listen check for every single one of them. There was somewhere around 14 vampires and vampires spawned in there, I want to say. And out of those 14, 10 of them woke up. They listened. They watched the part as they walked in. There was a nice little acid trap, if I remember correctly. And like about 10 feet inside, once they get into the tomb, they, there's a giant like statue of a dwarf holding a couple of uh children hands showing that this person probably been a very friendly person that was ruined they're basically watching them around that statue they're watching them in those little slits and as soon as they are good and out of the sun they jump onto them they're attack these Vampire spawn and vampires are attacking them. They are like literally about to kill them in for the most part and amongst all the fighting Durin sees a very familiar face He sees the major Yes, the major that he told that there was a important mission they had to take care of out there uh out in the middle of the wilderness when he took Zahiri's badge had apparently got bitten by the vampires and has been turned into a vampire and was attacking the party he he didn't die immediately he actually put up a good fight against the party actually all the vampire and vampire spawn Put up a good fight against the party. I want to say that a lot of the party I started worrying about. And I started wondering if I had to start fudging rolls. Because the party was getting whooped. I mean. Let, let's face it. I have a rogue. Two uh, sorcerers. A cleric. A magus. Which is basically like a battle mage. And 
a giant mentor barbarian. Yeah, um, that was a fight that I was thinking, okay, this is not going to end well. I need to go ahead and probably start fudging these roles, but I didn't have to. Why didn't I have to? That X factor that I told y'all about before. Yes, the great and powerful Huggins is whooping through every single regular vampire that he runs into. Um, Durin is like, had the cleric cast a spell on his uh, crossbow to where he's able to fire bolts that was able to actually do damage and not just have, uh, actually was bypassing the vampire's damage reduction. So yeah, they are like, they were getting whooped, but like at the last second, Huggins kind of like starting to whoop the head vampire, which I worked very hard on Heather. Heather was like a vampire that was like good at Marsmith. She was a vampire ranger, if I remember correctly, who just constantly kept taking her boat and she was throwing shots at him and <sighs> she, she was getting some good shots in. And my plan was to use uh, smoke uh, smoke grenades to try and make to where they can miss out, go someplace else and attack them. No, nah, not with Huggins right there. Every time they try to do something like that, he was taking them out. They would go to sleep. And in the end, the party, the party won, but it was a very shallow victory. And if I remember correctly, Durin made sure to stake the Major himself. But that's not where this ends. After they knocked everybody out, you would think that with all the fighting being done, that the party would decide, hey, let's kill the head vampire. Why? Because she's the head vampire. We don't want to deal with her stuff again. Nope. Uh, the head vampire is stuck in her coffin, even now, as I'm talking about this game. Um, uh, and we haven't played that, that story hadn't happened in, I mean, it's been about a year and probably a year and a half since we played that section of the game. And she's still technically in her coffin stuck. When he, when she was in her coffin, instead of kidding, killing her, I'm sorry, um, Durin decided that he wanted her to be a part of his brothel and nailed her coffin shut. So she's actually unable to get away. She can't die because she doesn't breathe. So she's just literally waiting for him to open up her coffin because if she breaks her coffin, then she has nowhere to sleep because, you know, if I remember correctly, the dust of your homeland is supposed to be in it and her homeland's dust is in there. It's kind of hard to get back to where she came from. And AK, I don't know where she came from, but I'm don't say there's nowhere nearby. Um, but yeah, that's how that story went. Now, the downside to this is this is the only time that I have these six people together ever like that one battle. And then we had, like I said, like with my other group, there was some scheduling issues. We were, uh, all jobs. And so we all have jobs. And so one of the issues we had with Jay Quartz and Braddock were, um, having to work. And when they got off work on their one day off, they wanted to spend time resting and didn't want to have to travel anywhere to play a game. So the game kind of stopped right there for them, but we did get a new person while we had this fight going on. We had a person that later on made a character named Teddy. I'll tell you about Ted the next time, but yeah, um, that's how that ended. Um, 
I wish we could have did more with those that group, but that's how it goes. You know, you play with who you can. Hope everybody enjoys themselves, and I hope y'all enjoyed the story. And I'll catch y'all later.